We recently came across a most curious artifact, one which has been claimed as having once been found, just like a handful of other exquisite objects we have previously shared, within a lump of ancient coal. It is a once smelted, solid iron recreation of a face, whose owner could have lived an unimaginably long time ago. With the claim written by John D. Morris, Ph.D., quote, I was recently contacted by an older lady who grew up in the coal mining area of Appalachia. Her ancestors, having lived in the area for generations, her now deceased father was a miner who had once made a remarkable discovery embedded within a coal seam, a human face made from cast iron. Like most people, they had been taught that coal is far too old to contain any human artifacts. The miner was so proud and perplexed by his find, it eventually became a family heirloom and was simply named Man. As a large, heavy object, it was eventually used as an ornament, decades later becoming stored among his belongings. She distinctly remembers her father's story of its discovery and the care he had taken with this prized object, having recently rediscovered it among her father's possessions." End quote. The owner of this artifact has requested to remain anonymous and to withhold her identity. This makes the story even more appealing to us, as throughout our time researching these types of claims, and indeed artifact, we find that those who are pushing a supposed discovery publicizing themselves while touring an object, are often in a search for a profit and recognition. Thus, as she is seemingly fearful of the artifact's disappearance, it would seem her story would align more with someone who possesses an item, not only of an extraordinary, incredibly controversial age, but also has a sentimental value, one which outweighs any idea of selling the item or even risking losing it from exposing its location. How old is the so-called man? Who could have made it, pouring cast iron into a mold, resulting in an exact duplicate of the man's face in the form of a three-dimensional mask? Could we be peering at the face of an ancestor, once of incredible importance? One from a lost civilization, a lost time within our planet's history? we find such possibilities incredibly intriguing. Human history is staunched with the use of masks in countless ways, for unlimited purposes. From ordainhood to hunting to death, masks have permeated the entirety of history. Their close relation to our lives has even allowed them to stay relevant to the present day and with the addition to medical discovery and technological developments, their usage has become a necessity. Often used in the arts as a synonym of disguise, found within stories of villainy versus heroism, even portrayed as possessing magical powers, but I digress. The artifact in focus on this video is one which we feel is of particular significant historical importance. Known as the Mycenaean Death Mask of Agamemnon, it was discovered by German archaeologist Heinrich Schliemann. Yet, it must be noted, under certain controversies, having already discovered the location of the legendary Troy, Schliemann's next expedition was to discover the final resting place of Agamemnon, the king of Mycenae, the person who legendarily led the Greek forces during the Trojan War. However, Many have come forward after looking into his work, claiming that there is no way he discovered this long-lost tomb. Thus, the true identity of the original owner of this mask is now a hotly debated topic. The named Mask of Agamemnon is clearly not the most visually stunning ever found, King Tut's death mask holding that title for many. However, the fact that it exists in its primitive form and of such a substantial weight, leads us to believe that whichever ancient civilization created this mask a very long time ago, and whoever it was for, had impressive power, probably at a time just post-Stone Age. According to Heinrich Schliemann, 
According to Pausanias, there were so-called underground chambers of Atreus in Mycenae. We have in the past covered the astonishing architecturally advanced design of the treasury of Atreus, its enormous lintel and glass-like perfection of the blocks laid within at the time of its creation. Yet these so-called underground chambers supposedly hide treasures of enormous proportions. Could this ancient mask be just a fragment of one of these legendary hordes? When he found these fragments, of what we suspect to be larger treasures, he stated, quote, The mask was made of a thick sheet of near pure gold, which was then hammered against a wooden background. A sharp tool was used to then chisel the finer details. The mask depicts the face of a man with an oblong face, wide forehead, long fine nose, and tightly closed thin lips. Details of the eyebrows, mustache, and beard are visible. Near the ears, two holes were made so that the mask could be held over the deceased's face. Of the five masks I found, this was the only mask showing a bearded man," said Schliemann. Thus, his conclusion was that it had belonged to Agamemnon. We find the mask's existence, regardless of the claimed previous owner, and, indeed, the legends of still lost treasure, highly compelling. During such events as a pyroclastic flow, complete human forms can often be preserved in a fixed position, turned to ash in an instant. Someone turning into a stone fossil with age, however, was thought to be an impossible scenario. That was until 1898, when an extremely controversial discovery was made deep within a copper mine. Although several reports have surfaced over the years of this most peculiar of discoveries, only one has ever managed to stay around long enough to be officially documented. Deep within an old copper mine in Chukikamata, an ancient stone woman, complete with basket and tools, was discovered. And although a date of only 400 years was preliminarily given, it is clear to the many involved that she is far older than that. The discovery was examined closely by José Torobino Medina, a central figure in Chilean archaeology at the time. He described his findings as follows. The body is that of a female. The depth of the soil where the corpse was found was no more than 6 to 8 feet, and the miner was probably searching the mountain when a sudden collapse buried her. The miner, feeling that the mountain was breaking down, lifted her arms up to protect her head, the position in which her body is preserved. This discovery, although the only one of its kind, is highly controversial, and we suspect this may be because certain individuals are aware of its true antiquity. Beside the body were the remains of a basket, a stone sledgehammer, several stone shovels, sharpened pieces of wood, and a torn bag made of animal hide, all leading to the conclusion that this mummy dates from a very distant time within our history. After more recent analysis was conducted, it was discovered that it was actually a man, strangely. He also has an unusually shaped skull, and a green hue from sulfate and chloride within the copper. It is thought this may have been one of the contributing factors in his marvelous preservation. The Copper Man of Chukwikamata is extremely difficult to research, and although he is clearly of considerable historical importance, his whereabouts may continue to remain vague. Regardless of his known whereabouts, his existence will forever lend credence to a forbidden history here on our planet. <laughs>